Hi, welcome to Lund Photographics. I'm Niles Lund, and today I'll continue with our series on the spectral responsiveness of collodion film. In particular, we'll investigate the comparative effectiveness of three different studio light sources in forming collodion images. Before going any further, I want to reiterate we're discussing wet plate collodion exclusively. The comparisons you see here do not apply to panchromatic black and white or color film. The first thing we'll need to understand is how salted collodion behaves with broad spectrum illumination. The first chart, we'll call it a spectral response curve, shows exactly what wavelengths affect collodion film and which wavelengths do not. The wavelength is plotted along the horizontal axis and responsiveness or sensitivity of the film is plotted on the vertical axis. Here you can clearly see that collodion film responds to wavelengths between 325 nanometers, ultraviolet, and 500 nanometers, which is the region that borders on blue-green. I've included a visible spectrum below the horizontal axis as a convenient reference. What does this mean? It means that collodion is blind to any wavelength longer than 500 nanometers, blue-green, or shorter than 350 nanometers. Parenthetically, we're limiting ourselves to a range of wavelengths that we can broadly consider illumination for normal photographic purposes. Practically speaking, it doesn't matter how bright your light is outside of this spectral region of sensitivity, it won't contribute to the formation of an image. Knowing this, let's take a look at halogen lighting. Here's a simple studio setup illuminated with halogen lighting. And here's a chart showing the spectral output of a halogen lamp as compared to the sensitivity profile for collodion film. The first thing we notice is that the bulk of the lamp's spectral output lies outside the sensitive range for collodion. Putting a number on it, collodion is blind to fully 96% of halogen's output illumination. This wasted energy goes solely toward heating up the studio and melting your subjects, leaving only 6% of the total light output of the halogen lamp to form the collodion image. The next lamp on our list is compact fluorescent lighting. The overall coloration of illumination is a little bluer than halogen. If we look at the spectral output of the daylight CFL bulb, we find that 80% of the CFL bulb's output lies outside the collodion's sensitive range, leaving only 20% for image formation. This is definitely an improvement over halogen lighting, but still not very efficient. By applying a little thought to our selection of lighting, we can see from the sensitivity profile for collodion that we'd need a lamp whose output wavelength is centered on 400 to 450 nanometers to match the most sensitive region of the film. LED lighting is perfectly suited for this application. For this example, we'll be using one of our own blue LED studio flood lamps. As you can see, all of the illumination is, well, blue. This takes a little getting used to in the beginning, but after a few sessions, it becomes second nature and you hardly even notice it. But the film absolutely loves it. Looking at the spectral output of the LED, you can see that blue LED illumination falls in a narrow region completely within the sensitive profile for collodion. This means that 100% of the lamp's output energy goes toward image formation, and none is wasted on heating up the studio or blinding your subjects. Based on the spectral output plots shown here, watt for watt, LED lighting is 5 times more efficient than compact fluorescent lamps, and 20 times more efficient than halogen lighting when used for wet plate collodion photography.